Hey, how's it going, art nerds? And welcome to another video where I, Diddy Mark, I'm talking to a microphone like it's a person. But yeah, here you are again in another video of mine. Are you subscribed? I hope you are, because you know these art style videos, it's a lot of effort. And seeing numbers go up makes me feel like the effort is worth it. So yeah, you know, yeah. Like and subscribe, nerd. Anyways, in today's video, I'm going to be continuing the series I already started on this channel, which is the how to copy the art style of our favorite mangaka. I've already done one on the author of Jujutsu Kaisen, Gige Akutami, and one of the author of My Hero Academia, Horiko Shikohe, and in this video that you're watching here, on this very moment in time, on this day on which the good Lord has made, I'm going to be doing one on the author of Bleach, Tight Kubo. <laughs> Tite Kubo. Tite Tai Tukubo. Tite. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. I've heard some people say tight. I've also heard some say Tite. I, I don't know. Just let me know in the comments how to pronounce it. I'm just going to say tight for now. But yeah, like the last video, I, Diddy Douchebag, do not condone you copy anyone else's art style. Why? I don't know, because that's lame. Why not make your own and be unique? Asshole. <laughs> but yeah, also, just because you watch this video and you see me be somewhat successful at imitating the style, doesn't mean that you can too. Well, not unless you understand the drawing fundamentals to a certain degree, because if you don't and you attempt to do this, you might get upset when your drawing ends up looking like a wet spaghetti with eyes and ears. So yeah, I don't recommend doing all this unless you know what you're doing. Okay, all of that aside, let's get into it. So like we did for Akutami and Kohei in the previous videos, we're going to dissect Kubo's art style by analyzing the anatomy, the inking, and then the toning style. And after all of that, I'm going to draw one of my original characters in the Bleach art style. Let's go. Okay, so the anatomy in Bleach. Basically, if the operative word for Akutami's style was sharp edges and the operative word for Kohei's was minimalist as fuck, the operative word for Kubo's art style is noodly. What that mean? It means that this man Kubo be drawing his characters long as heck everywhere, bruh. Like their toes are long, their feet are long, their hands, their freaking necks, their eyes, their noses, like even their jaws be long. Like look at it. It looks like a knife. Especially the male characters, man. Like their jaws look like they could cut a cake. <laughs> cut a cake. <laughs> okay, okay. Now how I said it makes it sound bad, but it really works. And like Kohei, Kubo's art is one of the most beloved and aesthetically pleasing to the manga community. By the way, I'm gonna say this now because I forgot to say this earlier. But in this entire video, I'm referring to Kubo's later art style in Bleach, not the earlier ones. Yeah, I just, I just thought I mentioned that. Yeah, but yeah, where, where were we? Oh yeah, anatomy. Basically, Kubo draws body parts to look a little stringier and longer than they are. Like even muscular characters have a certain leanness to them, and I think it's this aspect that makes his art style really cool. I will say that the exception to this stringy character's rules that I noticed was the way in which Kubo draws female character faces. Those are a lot more rounder in the face shape and eyes unlike the male characters, and the noses in the females are shorter than they are in the males. But yeah, that's basically the main gist of things for Kubo's anatomy style. Now, let's move on to the way he inks. Okay, Kubo's inking style is basically the standard of inking for manga. You know, like Naruto and My Hero, but like, you know, there's something to it that makes it different. And I think that difference is because although the line art is clean, I would make the guess that Kubo makes shorter strokes when he inks, as opposed to longer ones of the standard inking style. And this makes his, you know, inking style a little rougher. And this also, you know, kind of adds to making it stand out from the other standardly inked mangas, you know, like Naruto and such. Also, when it comes to inking, Kubo uses solid blacks a lot. Like, like a lot, a lot, like almost as much as Kishimoto and Naruto. And this is because he barely uses tones, but we'll get to that. But yeah, Kubo uses a lot of solid blacks for clothing, hair, etc. And he also doesn't hatch or cross hatch a lot, as opposed to someone like, you know, Murata. However, when he does hatch, he uses this specific cross hatching technique here all the time. He rarely uses the regular cross hatching technique and he rarely uses parallel line hatching like the way Gege Akutami does. But yeah, that's essentially it for the way Kubo inks. So now let's move on to the way he tones. Okay, so like I said earlier, Kubo rarely tones, but when he does, 
he uses it like Akutami basically to sell an emotion or like a power move or something. He also uses it when like, like there are multiple characters in a panel and he wants to show one in the foreground. And you know, yeah, from my observation, those are the only times that he tones. Oh yeah, he also tones like background elements sometimes too, but that's, that's it, that's pretty much it. Now, let's move on to me attempting to imitate his art style using everything I just learned from my observation. Okay, so starting off here, I'm laying down the rough sketches and yeah, I'm gonna be drawing my original character Kane from my series Metal Souls published and serialized in Saturday AM in the Bleach art style. But yeah, carrying on with the sketches, remember when I said you needed foundational skills? Yeah, you can see me putting them to use now. But anyways, as I'm sketching, you can see me trying to nail the noodly, elongated anatomy style of Kubo. I'll fast forward to when I start inking and I'll explain my thought process as I do it. Okay, now I've laid out the sketches and I've started inking. So as I'm inking now, you see me trying to nail those short strokes we talked about earlier while I maintain a cleanliness to the line art. And eventually, you'll see me using that specific cross-hatching technique under Kane's neck. And you'll also see me use a lot of solid blacks for the clothing. Lastly, for the toning, like I said earlier, Kubo rarely uses tones. But what I did not mention earlier was that going off of the few people of color in Bleach, Kubo does tone their skin darker, like you see me do with my character right here. And there you have it, the completed work. You know, now is it completely identical to Bleach's art style? No. Is it similar? Definitely. But it certainly isn't 100%. And like I said in the previous video, the more you keep practicing, the closer yours will inch to the 100% identical mark. But remember, it'll never get there. It'll never be 100% identical because like I said in the previous videos, an art style is like a signature. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button and hit the subscribe button as well. These art style videos, they take a lot to make, so I appreciate it when I see them do well. Anyways, don't forget to leave a comment because I respond to any and all comments. Till next time, nerds of art, it's your mans, Didi Mark. Peace.